Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to continue on our sensation journey, starting with our first of our five senses. And we're going to start with vision. This is one of the more complicated transduction processes of our five senses, and that's where we're going to start with this one. After this, it gets a little bit easier to explain how information is transduced into information that our brain can understand. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll start here with the diagram of the eye. There are a lot of different parts of the eye as well, from the cornea and the iris, the pupil and the lens that make up the front of our eye, to the retina, the fovea, the optic nerve, and the blind spot in the back of our eye. The retina is where all the visual information lands on our eye, the fovea being that point of central focus. Whatever you're looking at right now is in your fovea. If you notice, it's more clear than all the information in the surrounding peripheral area, and that is because the information is sitting right now on your fovea, and the rest of it is on the rest of your retina. And the optic nerve is where this information exits your eye to go up into the brain. The blind spot is where that information comes together, so there are no cells there to take in visual information. It's a very small piece, our blind spot, most of you probably don't even notice that you have it. So when looking at the process of vision, whatever you're looking at right now, again, your eye has to focus on. Accommodation is what we call it when the lens of our eye actually changes shape to put something into focus. And that information can then land on our retina and our fovea for us to be able to see it. From our retina, this information is passed on to rods and cones that make up our retina. Rods help us to see black and white images and it's what we use in dark lighting. Cones help us to see color. We also see things more clearly in full color and in the light of day because cones are each attached to their own bipolar cells. Rods, on the other hand, have what's known as summation. They will have multiple cells that will converge together to pass this information on into our brain. But information goes from our rods and our cones to the bipolar cells in the back of our eye. This information is passed on to ganglion cells, and these ganglion cells will then converge together to form the optic nerve. Information will travel down the optic nerve and into our brain, going first to the thalamus. If you remember from neuroscience, the thalamus is the relay center. It takes in information from our senses and decides where that information needs to go. So information from our eyes go to a part of the thalamus called the LGN cells that take in this visual information, and they will send it to the back of our head to our occipital lobe. In our occipital lobe, it will go to our visual cortex and any association areas related to the information that we're seeing. So that's the entire process that we need to go through in order to see something. And this is the process known as transduction taking information from a stimulus energy and turning it into a neural impulse, turning it into something our brain can understand. Now this gives us part of the picture of how we see things, but what about color? How does the visual system create color? As you may know, colors are waves. They are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And this is the entire range of electromagnetic energy, including radio waves, x-rays, microwaves, and what we can see is visible light. The visible spectrum is actually just a really tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum that our eyes can actually see. And this will include all of the waves make up all of the colors that we are able to see as humans. Another word for color is hue. And the hue of each color, the differences in the colors that we see, is determined by the length of the wave. Waves that are closer together are going to create our blues and our purples. Waves that are further apart are going to create our yellows, our oranges, and our reds. So different wavelengths make up different colors. The amplitude, or the height of the wave, is what determines its brightness. So high amplitude is going to be very bright colors, and a low amplitude is going to create more dull colors. 
There are two theories of color vision that together help us understand how we see all of the colors we are able to see. The first one is called the Jung-Heimholtz trichromatic theory of color, and this one explains color vision at the retinal or the receptor level. We know that we have rods and cones in our eyes, and our cones is what helps us see color. We have three types of cones, red, green, and blue. And so these cones work with the waves that we see through a process called additive color mixing. You can think of additive color mixing if you've ever sat on a stage, like in an auditorium, and you look up at all of the lights. You'll notice that there's not just white lights there, but there are a variety of different colored lights. But when they're turned on, what you see on stage, if you've ever gone to a play or musical performance, the color that you see is white. So additive color mixing is the addition of light waves to create different colors, and adding all light waves together creates the color of white. This is the opposite of subtractive color mixing. If you've taken an art class before, if you take a variety of paint colors and mix them together, you usually end up with kind of a gross brown or almost a black color when you mix together all of the paints. When you use subtractive color mixing with painting, what you're doing is actually taking away these light waves until you end up with black. And so when we look at these light waves enter our eyes and hit the cones, what we are talking about is this additive color mixing. The other theory of color vision is called the opponent process theory. And this one explains color vision at the ganglion level. So remember, we go from our rods and cones to our bipolar cells to our ganglion cells. And ganglion cells have color pairs, blue and yellow, black and white, and red and green. Every ganglion cell has an on center and an off surround. The on center is the color that that cell is responsible for. The off surround will be the opponent color or opposing color in that color pair. And so when the correct light wave hits that cell on the on center, that cell will fire, allowing you to see that color. If any other color hits that cell, it will not fire. And if it hits the off surround, it also will not fire. It has to be the same color light wave as it is the on center of that ganglion cell. However, we know that these off centers exist because of after images. If you stare at an object for a very long time and then move your eyes to say a blank wall, you might see this faint after image of whatever it is you are looking at. And you'll notice that the color of this after image are those opponent process colors. And that's what helps us to know that these opponent colors actually exist in these ganglion cells. So for example here, we have a red and green ganglion cell. When red light hits a red on center, the color you will see is red. But when green light hits that cell, the cell will not fire because it has to be the same on center color. On the second cell, if green light were to hit that cell, you should see the color green. If red light were to hit that cell, the cell will not fire. So that's how these ganglion cells work. Light waves have to match the color that that on center is responsible for, otherwise it will not fire. When it comes to things like color blindness, we know that that has to do with a problem with the cones. About 8% of males and about less than 1% of females experience some type of color blindness and it seems to be genetic. And so these color theories work together to really help us to understand how we see the wide range of colors that we see. First with those cones and then passing that information on to the ganglion cells that fire and send this information up into our brain. So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit about the transduction process of how we see and how we see the different colors that exist in our world. Next up we're going to look at the sense of hearing and the sense of touch. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, be kind to your mind.